This is rebuilding a very old horizontal steam engine, and part one covers inspection and assessment of the potential damage. This is a very old engine, it's very industrial, and it's well made, which is always a good sign. But it's in a bit of a state. It's been in my workshop for quite a while, and it's been underneath the drilling machine, so it's covered in swarf and sawdust and all sorts of things. Often when I make these videos, I call them renovations, this one's going to be a total ground up rebuild. For instance, I will be remachining the flywheel. The flywheel is very pitted and it would just take too long to use emery cloth to get through the pitting. All of the steel and cast iron parts of this engine are very rusty, which leads me to believe that it's been kept in a very damp environment. Anyway, the first thing to do is to put some compressed air into the engine and see if it runs. I've already put some oil into the cylinder via the inlet and this is blowing out of the exhaust all the time. But does it run? Yes, it does. As per usual, of course, there's no compression to speak of, and the piston's blowing very badly. But the engine's not knocking too badly at all, I'm quite pleased. There is a strange tapping noise coming from the crosshead, and there's a bad leak on the steam chest cover, which to me seems to be a little bit on the thin side. This is a very industrial engine, not like the last one. It's not a little brass engine, this one. It's really brutal. And when this is put back together, it will be good. I quite look forward to getting this running properly. A quick look in detail at the crosshead and the piston rod shows that the piston rod is a very sloppy fit in the crosshead. It does have a cotter pin through it, but it has a weird packing washer, so there's something wrong there. I'm going to look into that in greater detail as the build progresses. I'm going to remove the flywheel from the engine early on, because it's such a big lump and it makes the engine very heavy. And I don't like the look of this key. I really don't like the look of it. It should not be like this. So what I'm going to try and do is tap it out from the other side. But please bear in mind, it is not good to be hammering on a key in any direction with a great deal of force. Because what's likely to happen is you'll break the crankshaft on the crank web. And when I look closely at the crank web, someone's done this in the past, there's a definite brazed repair on the crank web. I'm removing the top cap of the main bearing nearest to the flywheel because I'm going to use a drift to try and tap out the key from the inside edge of the flywheel. Normally a flywheel key has a lip on it that allows you to put a lever down through the key and pull it out of the front, but this one's broken off. By removing this bearing top cap it will allow much easier access to the keyhole so I can get a tool in there to tap out the key. Already you can see clearly how rusty these parts are. They're going to take quite a lot of cleaning up, but it will be worth it in the end. This is going to be a fine engine. The first tool that I'm going to try is a piece of piano wire. Piano wire is very hard stuff, and by tapping the piano wire, I'm going to see whether the key comes out. As you can see, the whole engine is moving on the bench, and I'm tapping it very gently. At this point also, you can see the repair on the crank web. Anyway, the piano wire didn't work. So what I did, was quickly put a piece of bar in the milling machine and mill it to this shape. This is a much more substantial tool, but I'm still not hitting it very hard with the hammer. It looks a lot more severe than it is. The last thing I want to do is stress out the engine and break something. I come across a lot of damage to steam engines where people have been too heavy handed with things like keys. Despite tapping the key, albeit gently, it didn't budge. So it's time for some heat. I'm not trying to get the flywheel too hot, I'm just gently warming it up, and it should free off the key. Don't go mad if you do this, you don't want it to glow bright red, and you don't want to melt anything, and don't set fire to things on the bench. So with a little bit of heat applied, you can see the key's coming out quite nicely now. So once the key popped out, it was quite easy to remove the flywheel. There was a bit of rust inside the flywheel which made everything grab together. Finally, I removed the other bearing top cap and the big end, and here you can see the flywheel and the crankshaft. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.